This video is going to be a quick uh, review of bonding capacity, which you would have covered in Chemistry 20, uh, the bonding unit. So uh, watch this video if you're still a little bit confused. Make sure to review your notes from Chemistry 20 before moving on with this unit. First, we're going to look at bonding versus non-bonding electrons. And to do so, we're going to draw some Lewis diagrams of common atoms that we'll see in organic chemistry. So we're going to start with carbon. Now, as a reminder, carbon is in group 14, so it's going to have four valence electrons. Uh, and when we draw this Lewis diagram, we start with one electron on the top, and then we can rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise until we've drawn all of our needed electrons. So our Lewis diagram for carbon has four electrons, one on each side of that element symbol. Oxygen is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. So we're going to do the same process, starting at the top of our element symbol and then going clockwise. Now, as soon as we have four, we've filled in all sides. We're going to start doubling up. So we'll have two electrons on the top and two on the side. So you'll see some differences here in our two Lewis diagrams. On oxygen, we have two sets of paired electrons. These paired electrons are called non-bonding electrons. Because they are already paired up, they're not capable of forming a covalent bond and are just going to kind of hang out in that molecule. Uh, you'll see that on carbon and on oxygen, though, we have these unpaired electrons. These unpaired electrons are what we call bonding electrons. Because they do not have a partner yet, they're going to seek out a partnered electron in a neighboring atom and form a covalent bond. So once we've kind of mastered our Lewis diagrams, we can look at something called bonding capacity. And the bonding capacity of an element is the number of covalent bonds an atom of that element must form to achieve a full octet. So that full octet is going to be either eight electrons or two, depending on uh, which uh, period our element is in. Um, so the easier way to say that is that the bonding capacity of an atom is equal to the number of unpaired or bonding electrons in its Lewis structure. In organic chemistry we're going to look at fairly few elements um, so we're gonna just going to look at the bonding capacity of these elements. We're going to start with carbon. Carbon is going to be in every organic compound that we see and we'll just draw that Lewis diagram here for unpaired electrons. Hydrogen is going to be in all of our compounds as well. Hydrogen has one unpaired electron. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so two paired, three unpaired. Oxygen has six, so four of them are paired up, two are unpaired. And fluorine has seven, so three sets of two or six paired electrons and one unpaired electron. So starting with carbon, we see that carbon has four unpaired electrons. Those four unpaired electrons mean that carbon has a bonding capacity of four. And this is going to be true for all group 14 elements. If we look at hydrogen, we see that hydrogen has one unpaired electron. Now hydrogen is in uh, period one, so it only needs two electrons to fill its octet. So hydrogen is going to have a bonding capacity of one, meaning it will form one covalent bond. Next up, if we look at nitrogen, we see three unpaired electrons. Uh, that means that nitrogen has a bonding capacity of three. And this is going to be true for all elements in group 15. So nitrogen and phosphorus are really the only two that we're going to see in organic chemistry. Both have a bonding capacity of three. Uh, looking at oxygen, we see two unpaired electrons. So oxygen has a bonding capacity of two. And that's going to be true for everything in group 16. So 
pretty much we're going to be looking at oxygen and sulfur primarily. Both will have a bonding capacity of two. And then lastly, we see fluorine. Fluorine has one unpaired electron. And this is true of all of our halogens. So everything in group 17. So fluorine is gonna have a bonding capacity of one. It can form one covalent bond. And that's gonna be true of all of our halogens. So everything in group 17, uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are all gonna have a bonding capacity of one. Once you know the bonding capacity of your element, you can draw Lewis structures and you can incorporate single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds to fulfill that bonding capacity. So let's imagine first we have a carbon compound, CH4. Carbon has a bonding capacity of four. We have four hydrogens. So we're gonna have single bonds between our carbon and all of our hydrogens. The same would be true for something like NH3. Nitrogen has a bonding capacity of three. We have three hydrogens, so we will have three single bonds to that nitrogen. We can also have double bonds, and a double bond is two covalent bonds, so it's gonna take away two from that bonding capacity total. So if we have a compound like C2H4, we're gonna start by drawing our carbons. They're gonna be connected by a double bond, and then those four hydrogens will be spread around each of our carbon symmetrically. So if we look here, we see that we have one, two, three, four bonds on our carbons, um, but only three atoms are bonded. So double bond will take up two from that bonding capacity. Uh, and then lastly, if we look at a triple bond, something like C2H2, uh, we'll have our carbon atoms with a triple bond between them, and then each carbon will have a hydrogen. And if we again count the number of bonds, we see only two bonded atoms, but one, two, three, four bonds total to that carbon. Uh, so when you're drawing your Lewis structures, really make sure that you're accounting for double and triple bonds in your bonding capacity.